In this video, I'm going to talk about ganglion cysts, which are the most common lumps and bumps that we see around the wrist and hand. I'm Stephen Bunting. I'm an MSK physiotherapist and sonographer. This is Physio MSK. Welcome to the channel. Before we get started, please note that although the vast majority of hand lumps and bumps are perfectly harmless, there are some that aren't. Thankfully, malignancy in the hand is very rare, but it can occur, so please do see a medical professional, especially if your lump is growing rapidly, if it's very painful, or if the skin over it has become discoloured. Okay, so with that done, let's start with by far the most common lump around the wrist, the ganglion cyst. Ganglions are the round or oval shaped lumps that occur around the wrist. They can sometimes feel quite firm and sometimes fairly soft depending on the pressure of fluid inside them. And that fluid is essentially the normal lubrication fluid that bathes all of the joints around the hand and wrist. This synovial fluid should be contained within the joint by a lining called a capsule, but sometimes this joint capsule will weaken and develop a bulge. And that's just what a ganglion is. It's a bulge, or to be medically correct, a herniation of the joint capsule. So a ganglion is essentially normal body fluid, which has just ended up in the wrong place. It's often not painful, and so the main complaint that people have is that they just don't like the way it looks, and that it can get in the way and catch on things during normal daily use. So for most people, it becomes an annoyance rather than anything else. But sometimes a ganglion can press against pain sensitive structures like nerves or tendons and therefore they can be painful in some people. Also, the larger ones can interfere with wrist movement and tend to be more uncomfortable than the smaller ones. Having said that though, I have seen ganglions that look fairly small on the surface but are in fact fairly deep underneath, a bit like an iceberg. So they can be deceptive. So if yours is fairly small, but seems to be far more painful than you might expect, then get it checked out. An ultrasound or an MRI scan can image a ganglion really well and see exactly how extensive it is. This is what they look like on an ultrasound scan. Essentially, a dark sac with a neck leading down to the joint. They look a bit like a cartoon speech bubble. Most of the time they look like this, as a single round or oval shaped ganglion, but sometimes they can stack on top of each other like this, which is what we call a multi-lobulated ganglion. Anyone can get a wrist ganglion, but they are far more common in females and particularly in younger adults. Why they occur in some people and not others is a bit of a mystery. I will usually x-ray the wrist to see if there's any arthritis or other joint problem that might be driving the production of excessive joint fluid but in the vast majority of cases, the x-ray is completely normal. And so we don't really know what causes them. Most people don't need any further imaging to make the diagnosis. But like I said before, if yours is particularly painful or if it's just not fitting the typical ganglion picture, then an MRI or an ultrasound scan can confirm the diagnosis and measure its size and exact location. So what can you do if you have a ganglion? Well, if it's not causing much pain, then you could choose to just leave it alone. It's a harmless lump after all, so many people will choose to do just that. They will often go away by themselves, but sometimes not, and so other people will choose to have them removed, especially if they are painful. And the options for removal are either to drain them with a needle or have them surgically cut out. Needle aspiration is a good first option because it's simple, safe and doesn't leave a scar. The procedure involves injecting the ganglion with some local anaesthetic and then when it's numb to use a larger bore needle to drain the fluid. And what comes out is a clear jelly-like fluid. You sometimes have to squeeze the ganglion to get the last bit of fluid out. And that's it. In most cases it's a quick and easy process. If the ganglion is on the palm side of the wrist, then I will tend to use ultrasound guidance as the wrist arteries are often quite close and need to be avoided. 
The downside to needle aspiration is that the ganglion can sometimes refill again and so you might have to have it aspirated a few times before it goes away properly. I will tend to offer up to three aspirations before sending the patient for surgery. Surgery has a higher success rate but will leave a scar so bear that in mind especially if you're having it removed for cosmetic reasons only. You might be just swapping a lump for a scar which you might think is not much of an improvement and they can still sometimes come back despite surgery so you might end up with a lump and a scar. Anyway these are your options. Don't be tempted to go hitting them with a Bible though, which was the old fashioned way of treating them. It might burst the ganglion, but it might also cause much worse injuries that are much harder to treat. So that's wrist ganglions. You can also get ganglion cysts in the fingers, but we call them different names. If they occur over the middle finger joints, we call them synovial cysts. If they occur over the end joint near the nail, they are called digital mucus cysts. And if they occur as a small firm lump over the palm side of the fingers, usually just here near the skin crease, they are called pearl ganglions, as they often feel like a hard pearl and indeed look like one if they get cut out. All of these finger cysts can be easily drained with a needle, especially the pearl ganglions which are quick and easy. I really like doing these as it just takes a few seconds and it's gone for good. We don't see many musculoskeletal problems that can be cured instantly in this way. The only ones which don't tend to do as well with a needle aspiration are the digital mucus cysts at the end of the finger. These are usually caused by osteoarthritis of the joint underneath which causes a roughening of the bone which in turn wears a hole through the joint capsule where the fluid can then escape and build up. These cysts tend to do better with surgery as the surgeon can smooth off the roughened bone before removing the cyst, making it less likely to come back again. Don't be tempted to pierce these yourself though, because they are so close to the nail bed, which is nearly always full of unseen muck and bacteria, especially false nails, so the risk of infection is very high, and believe me, an infected finger is not a nice thing and often needs hospital treatment. You have been warned. Okay, so that's all of the fluid filled cysts around the hand and wrist and this picture just summarises where they occur, what we call them and what they look like. Okay, so that about wraps things up. I do hope you found the video helpful. Thanks very much for watching and bye for now.